If you're an aspiring venue owner, then you're in the right place. On this YouTube channel, we talk about all things venue ownership and how to create and sustain a profitable event venue. So today, guys, I'm very excited that we will be talking to Portia Brooks of Linpick. If you're looking for financing, you definitely do not want to miss this interview. Hey, good morning. So my number one question I always get from aspiring venue owners is how do I get financing? Well, today, guys, I have a finance expert here, Portia Brooks of Linpick, and we're going to be discussing and answering some questions at how you get financing. So I'm going to let Portia introduce herself and tell her tell you a little bit about her company. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for having me. And I, I'm, I hope that I shed a lot of light and bring a lot of value to the individuals watching and, you know, potential business owners. And so my name is Portia Brooks. I am, I have a company, Linpick. I am the CEO of Linpick. We are an online marketplace that provides business owners with, we connect basically business owners with lenders all across the USA that will approve them for funding. So that's what we have going on over here. So we do help a lot of business owners connect to capital. And so whether that's a startup business or whether that's an existing business, but I know for what we're doing right now, we're working, you know, you're working with a lot of startup businesses. So we're going to be talking a lot right. about startup loans, right? But right. yes, with both startups as well as existing businesses, but there are options out there for startup companies. So I'm excited to, you know, dive into that and talk about these options for these individuals. Okay, well, let's jump right in. So the first question I have, what kind of funding options are available to new business owners and what are the advantages and disadvantages? Okay, well, all right. So I'm gonna break it down like this because when it comes to business funding, there's eight types and we like to break it down like this over here at Linpick. So there's eight types of business funding or business lending options out there, right? And not all of them are for startup businesses, but it's important for startups as well as existing businesses, but for startups to know this also. So there's bank loans. And so that's where you can go to your Chase or your Bank of America or your, you know, whatever national bank that you bank at. Or there's also other smaller banks, you know, um, not basically federal or, you know, they could be city, they could be uh, local and regional banks, but there's all types of banks. There's over 4,000 banks in the U.S. And so these are, you know, lending options for you. And then there's also lines of credit. There's also, for instance, real estate investment. There's also debt consolidation. There's immediate capital that certain business owners can get. And there's also, let me see, lines of credit, bank loans, immediate capital, and, and that's basically MCAs, merchant cash advances. But for startup businesses, what you're going to get is you're going to do bank loans and that's most likely going to be an SBA loan. So when it comes to bank loans, there's basically two types of loans. You're going to have either an SBA loan, that's a government backed loan, or you're going to have a conventional loan. And so that's a loan that the bank can give you because they take deposits, right? And so a bank takes deposits, they give those out as loans back to the community. But so they can do that with their own money, which they're going to do either way, but one is going to be backed by the government and one is not going to be. And so the one that's not backed by the government, startups are not going to get those type of loans. So they're not going to get the bank conventional loans. They're only, only going to get the loans that are backed by the SBA, for example. Startups cannot get lines of credit. So the lines of credit, more so business loans and the uh, business credit cards. And so that's the right. eighth of um, financing. But when it comes to lines of credit, startups cannot get cash lines of credit. So that's not, you know, that's more so for existing businesses, but startups can get, again, the bank loans, which the SBAs, they can get the business credit cards and they can do equipment loans as well. And so and these are lenders that just specifically fund equipment, um, that will finance your equipment for you. And they can do, I know you're more, so your you know, clientele, they're not looking at real estate, but they can do real right. estate and 
investment loans as well. But the three that we're going to most likely be looking at today would be that SBA loan, which is a type of bank loan, the business credit cards, which we don't provide business credit cards, but we do understand about business credit cards. We do have some lenders that provide them, but we don't focus on business credit cards. And right. we also have equipment loans too. So that, you know, you can get an equipment loan with an SBA just to let you guys know, but there are lenders that specifically focus on equipment loans that we can talk about how the three differ. So also um, of these three, one, what is the interest rate? Which one would you tell a new startup to go in what direction? And what is the minimum and maximum amount so they can be approved for as a new business? So the interest rates are going to vary. Now, when it comes to SBA loans, and the most popular option for startup companies are going to be SBA loans. And this is because it's more so easier to get. These loans are, are made, these loans are backed by the government. And so this is the government saying to the, you know, the US population, go out and you know, start businesses, we're going to back you. Um, or existing businesses, you know, we want to back you, we want you to grow because you know, business businesses are the backbone of America. America. But mm -hmm. so with that being said, the SBA loans, they're going to have the lowest interest rates. Bank loans, generally speaking, have the lowest interest rates when it comes to loans. Bank loans are more so the foundation of lending. And so because banks bring in, the again, banks are getting deposits from the community and banks take that money and they lend it back out. So they're not paying for, you know, um, they're, they're not paying for the loans that they're giving out. Now, there are some lenders that one, either they have investors that they're getting money from or or they're borrowing money from banks and then they lend that money out to the community. And because now they're borrowing that money and they're lending it out to the community, that has a higher interest rate. For the most part, those type of loans anyway are not for startups. So when it comes to SBA loans, SBA right now, they start at a base and it's called Prime. And so that right now is 8%. And then a lot of banks either that's for, and this is what banks charge customers across the across the US. And so they started this base rate of 8% and then they build on top of that. And so now if you are, you know, if you come with all the great qualifications, a lot of times you'll have that 8% mark. But otherwise you'll also um if if not, and most people are not coming at that 8% mark, especially a startup business, then it's going to be potentially 8% plus one, you know, 1% 1 on top of that, maybe 2.75% on top of that. So you're probably looking at about a 10% interest rate right now but just re remember though interest rates have increased you know um from covid and so inflation has caused interest rates to increase and so now you know before previously an sba you can get that for like five percent and we're talking like last year um as of right now it's doubled and so right now you're most likely going to get get it at 10 percent. and so but there's also other types of lending right and so for if you want equipment specifically now this is going to have a higher interest rate than that SBA. Again, these are lenders that are not banks. And so these are lenders that are either they have investors or they're borrowing from banks, but right. these are easier to get. So these type of loans are easy to get than SBA loans. And so now with the equipment, that's going to be probably somewhere around like that 10% range up to 40%. Now, when it comes to a startup business, getting equipment, and this could be anything. So this could be, um, hey, I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a trucker and I want equipment. Or it could be, like with your clientele, like I, you know, want a venue and I need kitchen equipment, or I need, um, you know, uh, tables and chairs, and I like just, just all types of different things that you can need. You know, any type right. of business. Um, for any business purposes. But with that, if you just want that equipment finance, then you're looking at that 10 to 40% mark. And then of course, business credit cards, you know, that's about that 20% interest, you know, rate um, about those normally, that's normally what car uh, credit cards carry. But with business mm -hmm. credit cards, you don't have to, you know, a lot of times it's that 0% APR potentially for about a year. So um, those are about, yeah, that, that's basically what you get with those three different types of loan products. Right. Okay. So, um, and talking about loans, what is the difference between a secured and unsecured loan and which one is more suitable to a new business owner? 
Yeah, so when we're saying secured, unsecured, we're really saying you're coming to the table with collateral or you don't have collateral. And so now when we say collateral is either going to be, it's some type of asset. So it's real estate or it's equipment that you already own, or it could be accounts receivable. And so you, you're an existing business and you have invoices that are already out, like you already have services that you provided to your clients and you're waiting for them to pay you. And so you have invoices that are out and that is literally an asset. And so you have different assets that you'll have, you know, for your business. And if you go for a, a certain type of loan, then you'll have to back that loan with an asset. So just in case you default, that lender can basically take that asset from you. Now, when you go for certain types of loans, most loans are going to have a blanket lien that they put into place. And so with this blanket lien, they say that, you know, I mean, this is, this potentially could be you not having, you don't necessarily have to have real estate. You don't have to have any type of collateral, but you have business assets. And so now as a business owner, doesn't matter what you have, like for instance, your clients that open up a venue. Now, whatever they have inside that venue belongs to the business. And that technically those are assets. And so now they go for a loan, a, business, a lender can say, okay, I'm going to put in, you don't have to worry. You don't have to bring anything to the table. I'm going to put, you know, a blanket lien on this loan. And so what that blanket lien does is say, if you default, I can come after anything, you know, um, basically within that venue. Um, maybe if you own the venue, I can, that's real estate, then I can come after that real estate as well. But a lot of times blanket liens don't necessarily cover the real estate. Sometimes they do though. But um, as far as with as far as with uh startup businesses with startup businesses a lot of times you have to come to the table with collateral but again if you don't have it that's one thing now let's break this down so with sba loans when it comes to collateral if you have collateral you must use your collateral but as a startup business if you don't have collateral and you're going for an sba loan it's harder to get so um you're gonna have to come to the table anyway with a down payment so you'll have to come to the table with 15 to 20 percent of the loan amount or the project amount and so whatever whatever loan that you foresee yourself needing you're going to have to already either shell into your business 15 to 20 percent or at that closing table you have to have that 15 to 20 percent and you got you have to say well this is what i'm putting into the project but otherwise um you have to have that regardless but if you have collateral it just makes you look better as a startup company but with equipment for example if you're getting an equipment loan you don't have to come to the table with collateral but you're getting equipment that is the collateral and so if you right. default they'll take that you know from you a lender's they just want to protect themselves and so now when you have that secured versus unsecured it's well what do you bring into the table what can i take if you default on a loan but with most startup businesses sba bis business credit cards you don't need anything so business credit cards you know it's most for the most part it's unsecured you don't have to have collateral they're not going to take collateral it is an unsecured form of uh, lending as far as the SBA and equipment, for the most part, they're not unsecured. SBA, it doesn't require collateral, but if you have it, you must use it. And if you have it, it's just the, it betters your chance as a startup company of getting funding. So my question to you is, because I get this question all the time from my clients, I don't have any collateral but my home. So would they be able to, as a startup business, use their home as collateral? And would you advise doing so? If you go for an SBA, like again, so as a startup with business lending, so there's personal lending too, right? So we don't do personal lending, but there's probably, like you can get a personal loan, you can go that route. And, um, but if you want a business loan, you don't want this to show up on your, you know, your credit report, there's only certain, there's only but so many options you have. And that when it comes to the SBA, if you have a home, that is collateral and they will say you must use that home like you have to have equity in the home of course if you just bought the home and you don't have any equity and you know it makes no sense for them to put that down as collateral because there's no equity it, it really wouldn't matter but if you do have equity in your home you have real estate like that's your primary home like you must like once you go for that sba loan they're like no 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 it's just part of the sba you know bylaws their rules you have to put that up as collateral mm -hmm. okay so now this is the big question credit history what must your credit history look like as a new business owner to get funding so credit history is important and it's funny because i actually had a business owner say to me not that long ago 
well they did they, they had poor credit history like actually they had no credit history nothing was on their credit except for a child support collection right and so now but they say like they said that shouldn't matter you know i'm going for a business loan like my personal and they got you know really defensive about it you know they were just like this is my price that's my personal credit it's completely separate this is my business i, I set everything up for my business my personal credit should not come into play and it's like i'm sorry like that's not how it works right like your personal credit mm -hmm. is your your debt history it's your history over the course of you being an adult on how responsible you are like you know how do like how do you pay your bills do you pay your bills on time lenders want to know that so they're looking at your credit scores they're looking at your experience your equifax your transunion a lot of lenders you know just kind of heads up for people a lot of lenders look at um equifax excuse me experience so most lenders that we have are looking at experience and so they want that experience score to be at least at 650 mark we have lenders that come down to that 620 mark but a lot of times it's 650 and then sometimes there's lenders that only accept 700 plus so but with that the history within the report so you know it that really matters you can have a 650 credit score and you have a lot of derogatory still that lingers on your credit and so you could have collections and charge-offs and so that's going to matter um that may still get you declined even though your score meets the minimum or you could have a 620 score but it's just because you didn't build that much credit and it's possible that you can still you know um get a loan and you can still get it done but your credit history as far as how you pay your debts it matters there's no lender no type of business product out there that's not going to look at your personal credit history and scores okay so then the next question is um i know we have our credit history and then um the amount um that someone could should go in and request um because i know that there's people that go in they with the sba loans especially during COVID, um they got these sba loans these large amounts but they really didn't need that amount of money for their um their business so can they go back in uh, pay that money back or is there a certain amount you think that a uh, startup should start with other than I usually tell people maybe six months to a year of um, financing you know to get your business situated but what is your take on that so what you're speaking about previously the EIDL loans or the PPP loans and so um, you know you can definitely these are all SBA loans you know and bank loans they're they're amateur, amateurized loans. And so you can pay those down faster and save on interest. And so you can always go back if you don't need the capital and pay those off early, no matter what type of um, loan you got with the SBA, because the SBA has different types of loans that they provide as well. So with that, um, I would say it all depends on the business project. And so the way you're saying like, all right, that six months to 12 years, look, excuse me, six months to 12 months, that's working capital. So that's the mm -hmm. idea of um, I need, I don't know what what's going to happen within the business or I just have expenses. Maybe I have payroll. There's specific reasons that you need capital, but sometimes business owners just try, try to say like, I want working capital. So just give me money. I'll decide how I want to use it later. And, you know, almost you, you can't really do that. And so with the SBA, more so you have to have a project in mind. Um, you can get working capital, but for the most part, startup businesses are not just going to get working capital. It has to be something else. It has to be something tangible. Um, so it's like, well, I, I want to get this venue. I want to get the table. I'm going to get the chairs. I want to get, you know, I want to hire individuals to do A, B, and C. It's That's the project. And so that's really what you're nailing down. Like, you know, well, I have this your use of funds. I have A, B, and C, and D that I need, and this is going to cost me, you know, this much. And you'll be able to line that out. So it's hard to say exactly what a startup should go for, but really it's what those needs are right now. It's not so much just kind of, you can, but startups, you can get you know money like you can get a loan and you can hold on to that for the just in case reasons but you have like it's you're not just going to get a working capital loan like not just going to give you cash and say go ahead you know use it how you want to use it um that's that's not what's going to happen so yeah you can 
have money in the bank and, and it de really depends on, okay, well, how much is your payroll every single month and how much food expenses do you need for your business every single month? And then lenders for the most part, I, this is what I've come across. They'll give you about like, you're, you're kind of right on that Bonnie. Cause they'll give you about that six months of working capital. Mm -hmm. But that again, is that broken, it's broken down into, well, what does that consist of on a monthly basis? What are your expenses for the business? And so based on your expenses for the business, they can give you that six months, maybe a year as well. So they can do like that six to 12 months of working capital along with something else that you need for the, like the overall project of the business. Right. So now the big dreaded thing that all everybody hates is the business plan. So when you go for an SBA loan, do you need a business plan versus going to a bank to get a loan? So can you speak to that? Yeah. And the first thing I'm going to say is it's so when you're going for an SBA loan, for the most part, you are going to a bank. Yes, there are. There's depository banks and there's non-depository. So there's lenders out there. There are lenders out there. There are not banks that give SBA loans. But for the most part, when you're going for an SBA, it's almost the same as going to a bank. There are a lot of banks that do SBAs. And so it's not the SBA giving you this money. It's these lenders and banks, you know, in America that's giving you the money. The money's backed by the SBA. And so now with that, you, when you, when you go for the loan, yes, like the SBA conventional, like even though startups are not going to get the conventionals, but when you go for that SBA, you're going to need the business plan. It's no doubt about it. There's actually a few things that you will need. You'll need a business plan. You'll need business projections. You will need business experience and you'll need a down payment. So you'll need an equity injection of potentially 15 to 20 percent but that coming back to that business plan though it's so important and the reason is because a lender really just wants to know that you're going to pay them back like this is that's the whole point of underwriting your deal and and getting all your files and looking at your credit is to understand what your business is or what your business plan is. Um, and literally like just, you know, not even the, the document of it, but like, Hey, like what type of business are you trying to open? Like, do you have experience in this business? You must have experience to get an SBA loan. Like you can't just wake up one day and say, I want to start a venue and I'm going to get an SBA loan. No. And it's like, well, what, what experience do you have? Like, you know, have you worked in a venue? Like, have you, um, you know, worked with an event planner? Have you worked with anyone within this industry? Like, do you have any type of experience? We're not giving you money just so like, you know, you can think you, you know how to do something and basically you lose all our money. Um, cause you don't know what you're doing. And so, or you, yes, you can bring somebody in also, but a lot of times that person will have to sign off on that loan. But so with that, you have to have that experience and that experience goes in that business plan. So now with that business, the business plan itself, that lender wants to know, well, um, again, let me see what type of business, let me see what type of experience you have. Let me, you know, how do you plan to pay us back? That can be separate on the projections. Mm -hmm. And so that is like, Hey, I understand exactly how this business is going to go. I know how many clients I should have. I know my, my marketing, even marketing goes into the business plan. Like, oh, I have, you know, these are my marketing ideas. Um, you know, I, I understand A, B, and C. I, I know that my business is going to turn a profit, you know, at on month three, whatever that case may be, that's going to be within the business plan. Um, you know, how your venue is set up. There's everything about your business, what you know about your business, how you plan to pay this lender back goes in that business plan. This is basically just a document to make the lender feel comfortable. Like, oh yeah, like who? Like, um, nice. They, you know, they understand. They like right. got thing going on. Like, you know, everything checks, um, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, like everything is good. And we feel comfortable moving forward with this individual. Now that's not the only document. They're also going to look at your financials. And so you're going to have to come to the table with your tax returns, like your personal tax returns. You don't have business tax returns at this point, like if you're a startup business, but you do have those three years of personal tax returns. At least you should, unless you, know, unless you don't like immigrant or, or different things and they can mm -hmm. work around that. But for the most part, people have three years of personal tax returns and they're going to look at your finances. So they're going to see, they want to know, you know, along with those projections on what you think the business is going to do. Well, until the business gets to that point, how are you paying this loan back? Like this loan is going to start. Like we give you this money next month. Potentially there are some times the SBA puts out 
different um, kind of promos. And then you mm -hmm. may not have to pay the loan back maybe for six months, but they, I'm pretty sure they're not doing that right now. But every now and then they have like different promos, but a lot of times during COVID. So as of right now, for the most part, that's starting back up that following month. And now how are, you know, how do you make, you know, plan to make this payment? Like you're going to get this business started. So with that now it's more so can your personal finances cover this loan until the business starts bringing in money and that's right. what the lenders are looking for as well and so you have with the personal finances you have to cover your personal expenses they're going to look at all your personal expenses they're going to look at your credit report they're going to see all the debt you have on your credit report they're going to add that up and say okay like this is how much debt you have like on a monthly basis can your monthly income cover that you know those monthly debts can it cover your monthly expenses who cool. what do you have left over can it cover us too so that's a, a big thing. And then when it comes to assets, again, now they're looking at, well, what type of assets do you have? You know, what are you bringing to the table? What can we collect on just in case you default? So there's this entire picture when it comes to, uh, you know, a, a startup business, a business in general, but really a startup business has to bring more to the table than an existing business. That existing business they have historical cash flow. They have, they can let the lender know, like, oh, well, I've been in business. This is what my business is currently doing. And lenders say, oh, you know, cool. Like, I feel comfortable because, you know, you do have a working business that's making money. But with a startup, mm -hmm. well, your business is not making money yet. Like, what do you, right. you know, what do you plan to do? But with the startup, also, if you come in as like a franchise, for example, or if you come in, with, you know, under someone who has experience and they're saying like, you know, they're walking you through all the steps that will make a lender feel more comfortable. So even like someone like you, where someone is saying like, okay, well, I've signed up with Bonnie, you know, um, and she's helping me with the, the venues and she has 15 years of experience doing this. And like, that's going to make a, your business plan stand out even more. Okay. And so what I often tell my clients, your uh, business plan is your roadmap, roadmap to success. And that is what your lender wants to hear, your success story. How are we going to get a return on our investment? So I'm often telling them to write a business plan and I really get that pull back, you know, but you never know at what juncture in your business that you may need to go for financing. So uh, as you said, it, it's a very important process and step that no business owner should skip. Um, so my next question, the application process and how long does it take? Because people will be, they'll come to me, my clients will come to me and we'll on the onboarding, we'll ask them, what is your startup capital? And we'll get a number. And then somewhere in the process, we'll find out they don't really have that startup capital and then are rushing back to go get some capital. And now we're in a mentorship program, which we can't halt the program because it's only for a certain amount of time. So now we have to wait around for you to get capital. But like I said, we don't wait, we pursue on, but you know, we go ahead and educate you, but what is the process and how long does it take? So when it comes to, we're kind of just, you know, speaking about SBA loans here. And when it comes to SBA loans, it can be anywhere between three weeks. And that's on like, you know, most people are not getting a three week SBA loan, but that's if it's extremely quick, um, it may be you just want, you want something very simple. You're bringing all your documents to the table very quickly. You potentially can get an SBA loan in three weeks and it depends what type of SBA loans. They have SBA loans that are, are micro loans um, and it doesn't require too many documents, still enough, but not too many. Um, and then they have SBA 7A loan and normally that takes about one to two months. I would say on average though, you're not gonna, like your loan is probably gonna close in about two months. That's just average SBA. Um, and so now, but when it comes to that process, you want to, it's, it's basically going to be document intensive. And so when you come to us, for example, and we're helping you get business financing, what we're doing is we're going over, we're asking you all the questions about your business. And so we want to understand everything that your business is and, you know, or you want it to be and what you need. So that use of funds. And so we we're doing this so that we can match you with that lender, make your, you know, make your process a little bit easier. And so now you're not going and you're not searching for lenders that will be able to fund you. We know the lenders and we're able to match you with one of the lending product. A lot of times, again, if it's a startup, it's going to be that SBA, or if you want equipment, we can do equipment as well, but we're going to match you with one of these products. And then now we're going to match you with a lender that can, you know, 
uh, qualify you or approve you based on your qualifications. And so, but with that, it's really giving you these list of documents that's needed. It's like, okay, well, how fast can you get me your personal tax returns? How fast can you fill out this personal financial statement? How fast can you make a business plan? Or hopefully you already have one. Are there individuals that you can go to make a business plan for you? How fast can you come up with your two years of business financial projections? There's going to be a list of documents that you do have to bring to the table. And then now with that, we'll be able to kind of underwrite your deal before we start sending it out to lenders. So we can, again, just kind of match you with those lenders. But if you're not using us, then you're going, you're, again, uh, you're going to go to a lender. That lender is going to just tell you like, hey, I need all of these documents from you. And you're going to say, okay, you know, cool. Like I'm going to start bringing these documents to you. And then the lender is going to go over it during their underwriting process. And then potentially two, three weeks in, they'll get back to you and they'll say either you're qualified or you're not qualified. If you're qualified, you're still going to have to go through more underwriting like it's you know it's it's that pre-underwriting and then there's final underwriting and so um that final underwriting it may be even more like they may have discovered something in these preliminary documents and now they need even more documents you know um to, to you know kind of go over what they've discovered and so but but with that you have these two these two phases to the document process. But for the most part, SBA loans are just going to be document intensive. And a lot of times, and even with the SBA, they have like, you can say, cool, like these are my tax returns. They're going to request from the IRS your tax returns. So now they're going to take your tax returns from you. And then they're going to request those same tax returns from the IRS after they do that preliminary. So that final is more so now getting the legit tax returns, making sure they line up. So it's not, they're not taking your word for really anything they're doing all mm -hmm. their background checks they're you know um they're really going over you and this potential business they're even studying like if you're like i want to open up a venue right they are going and they're looking at other venues they're looking at other businesses that are like yours they're seeing if this is a business they even want to fund if this is something they want to get into if this is something that's worth it how's your industry what does your industry normally make so they're going to compare all, everything that you're saying about your industry to um different analysis that they have about your industry so right. it yeah, it's very in like a very intensive process. And that's why it can take that about that two month period. But again, you could be the type of person and you're getting everything on time and you'll probably come down. You might be able to get it done in a month. Right. And I love the point that you bring up that they will do the research about your target market, your competitors, because I often tell people in the initial phase, go out, do your research. And, you know, that's something that people, a hurdle that people, uh, step that people skip over. But then again, that deters the loan process. So yeah. I'm so happy that you touched on that point. So my next question is, is there, are there any fees associated with uh, applying for a business loan? There are. So when it comes to, when it comes to a business loan or that as specifically that SBA loan, right? You're, it's, it's almost they have as many fees as just like closing a mortgage. It's, um, you're probably gonna pay about one to 2% of the loan amount in fees, somewhere between that. And so you're, the SBA, for example, has an SBA guarantee fee. The SBA guarantee fee is just what the SBA charges that, you know, basically they're going to guarantee this loan to the lender. So if you default, they're gonna give a percentage of this loan back to the lender. They charge you a fee to do this. And so that's a closing fee, as well as you have to pay the lender's attorney fee at the end of it. So um, you there's title, there's search fees, there's a collection of fees, but it's not charged until the end of the loan. So it's not like you're paying any fees ahead of time. There, for the most part, you're not paying any upfront fees, but you are paying fees once the loan closes out. And then the same would be like for the equipment, you are paying fees once the loan closes out. And that could be similar, but it, it could be anywhere between like five to 10% as well on that funding amount. The equipment probably is going to be a little bit higher, but a smaller amount, loan amount probably, but a little bit higher than the, the SBA side um, if it's a startup business. But yes, there are fees involved. And as far as with us go, we do have our fees. So if you do use us, for example, where we're matching with lenders, we're getting you those pre-approvals, you can choose exactly what you want to, you know, which one you want to move forward with. Again, now with a startup or any type of business, when you want lending, it's hard. Like there's, there's literally thousands of lenders out there. And so for you to sort, be able to sort through these lenders and understand who's going to approve you, who's going to give you the best 
deal at the best terms, the best, you know, the lowest fees. Like there are lenders that have, you know, fee, fee differentiation. Like they don't all have the same fees. Some of them are lower than others. And so we are able to let you know, like which lenders can approve you and which ones are going to have, you know, the best terms and then kind of present that to you on a platter. Like, are this is lender one, two, three, this is what they're offering. This one might be offering you a higher dollar amount. This one might have lesser fees this one might have longer terms and so you're able to look to see okay like well this one works better for me you know and my startup business uh, this is what i want to start my venue with um and so yeah with that that's basically uh yeah that's that's basically the process okay so we're going to wrap this up but what advice would you give um new business owners when applying for loans uh, to increase their chances of getting approved well, something that you kind of hinted on, you know, before and we touched on, but when I think of startup businesses, I do think of that, like our three B's and it would be business plan, business projections and business experience. Right. And so now one, make sure the experience piece is so big. Make sure you have experience. Like you can't literally, you're not wait. like the whole idea of just out the blue, like, I, I want to start, I want to start a venue. It's like, mm, you know, cool for you, right? Like you, you right. can go and get money elsewhere, but you're not going to get it from the SBA. The SBA wants to know that you have experience or the least that you're bringing on someone who also, you know, has, who has experience and can help you through the process. That's the biggest piece. And then, you know, just to go over the financial projections, that's huge too. The the bank wants to know when you're going to be able to pay them back, when your business is turning a profit, how much you expect your business to make on a monthly basis. They'll ask you for the, your, you know, financial projections, basically month by month over the next two years, sometimes one year, but a lot of times two years, they'll ask you month by month, what do you expect your business to make? What are your business expenses going to be? And this is gonna let them know if you're gonna be able to break even, if you're gonna be able to pay them back and when. And then just to, you know, hone in on that business plan, and you know, it's huge. Like, you know, you said it is the roadway to success. And so it is something that you should want yourself. It is right. something that you should put together just to mentally know like, well, what, what do I see my business, you know, uh, being and what do I want for my business and what are my business goals? Like, yeah, you should put that together, but it's not, you know, if you want an SBA loan, that's no longer just for you. Like you, now you have to impress that lender. You have to make sure that lender wants to fund you. And that's really the goal at that point. So, um, just, you know, get your, get your financials together, uh, understand exactly what your business, you want your business to be and put your three B's together, your business plan, your business projections, and your, you know, get your business experience, make sure that you have that down packed as well, and you'll be good to go. So uh, my last question is, how do people uh, contact you and what are your qualifiers for people to work with you? So as far as with us, we are Lenpick. Uh, Lenpick.com, you can go to L-E-N-P-I-C-K. And so you can go to Lenpick.com. You can also find us on Facebook or Instagram and um, LinkedIn as well. And so Lenpick or Lenpick INC will be our handle. Now, with that, you can go online and you can literally qualify online. So um, we also have a referral link for Bonnie. So anyone who's watching this video or anyone who comes to us through Bonnie, you can use her referral link and you can go on that. And there's a, a just a, a quick matching qualification or online system that we have. And so you can put in your information and then we'll be able to match you with the product. And so we'll be like, okay, well, this is what you qualify for immediately. So you can see that. And then we're going to match you with our lenders on the back end. And, um, um, and so as far as with working with us, there's, I mean, we work with startup businesses, we work with existing businesses as well. And really what we want is for you to come to the table, at least with an entity. That's just like the, the minimum requirement that you've already set up an LLC. You've already set up a corporation. You set something up, like you have some type of business documents. Yes, there are lenders that will do sole proprietorships, but we want to see that you're serious. We want to see that, you know, um, you're not going to just basically start the process with us and then you're not going to follow through with it. We put a lot of time into underwriting your deal, matching you with the lending product, matching you with lenders. And so that's our minimal qualification. Um, but otherwise, it's more so us looking at just let us know what your story is. Let us know what you want to do if you're a starter business. And we'll be able to let you know if we can work with you. And that really is the difference between us and going directly to a lender. 
where if you go directly to a lender, that lender, a lot of times they're not going to give you, they're, they're not going to ask you your backstory and they're not going to give you any information of, you know, ahead of you filling out their application. So now you're going to, whether you're going online, a lot of people are going online, right? So you're going online and you're filling out these applications and you won't know if you're like, what's going to happen. Like, you don't know if you're qualified, if you're not qualified, you won't know until they look at it. And hopefully they respond back to you at some later date, you know, letting you know that, you know, you're not qualified or you are qualified, but even if you are qualified, how do you know it's the best deal? Like you just went through this whole process and you have one offer in front of you. How do you like, you know, there's thousands of lenders. How do you know that this person or this lender is giving you the best offer? You don't. And now, right. so that's with us, it's you're coming to us for a purpose. You're coming so that we can make this process easier, smoother. We can let you know who the best lender is for you and really just best lenders. And so it's like here again, three on a platter, what do you choose and which one is best for you? And so you now have basically the power that's in your hands. Lenders are now competing for your business, not the other way around. Right. Well, gosh, Portia, this was really some great information. I know my clients and uh, aspiring venue owners can take this information, be better informed when looking for loans or funding. So I want to thank you for your time today. And um, as Portia said, we'll have the referral link in uh, down in our description, also in our bio on our Instagram page. So again, Portia, I thank you so much. And um, I look forward to working with you and um, I hope my clients go in that direction to get better funding. Thank you, Bonnie. I look forward to as well. I look forward to helping all of you guys. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. And we'll speak again soon. All right. So I hope you found this information informative. And if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to stay in the know, please subscribe. Oh, 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 oh,